Well, good morning. Welcome to everyone watching online, all of you here today. If you haven't noticed, our parking lot's a mess. But it won't be long. It's going to be beautiful out there. I can almost smell the asphalt. I'm so excited. Now, if you're a tree lover like me, don't be discouraged. We had to take a few out that are tearing up the parking lot. We're going to put some back, replant some beautiful trees that won't tear up the parking lot. How about that for a thought? Might have should have done that from the beginning. I don't know. Remember to pray for our students and their leaders as they are uh, on their mission camp. They left this morning at 7.30, about 25 of them going to North Carolina. And uh, so be praying for their safety and that God will use them in a special way. Children and students will always be a priority here at the church at Argyle. Christmas in August is coming. August 22nd, Sunday, 11.30. If you're interested in singing on this year's Singing Christmas Tree, We'll answer your questions. You'll get to hear the music. We'll get you ready to go. The Argyle Summit is August 29th at 5 o'clock. We're going to have a lot of laughter with Andrew Stanley, whose dad is the famous pastor, Andy Stanley. And Andrew is a stand-up comic, and he's going to be hilarious. We'll have some great food. The evening is designed to encourage, to equip, and to uh, engage you. Everyone's invited. It's free, but please register online today so we can have food ready for you. The Book of Acts. To the ends of the earth, the acts of the Holy Spirit through his church. This is part 7. Our text today is Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47. So you can follow along with us in your Bible or your electronic device. A generous and growing church. Acts 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. You know, as Christians, as Christ followers, we all have responsibilities to each other, especially to our brothers and our sisters in Christ. All believers are called To lead real life change through Jesus from the inside out. That's our mission statement here at Argyle. Our vision statement is to go into my community equipped and encouraged to be the church. The Argyle way is our discipleship path to help you to grow in your relationship with God. First you decide to follow Jesus. And then you join a life group. And then you serve together. You give generously and you bring your friends with you. Today, we're looking at the model of the early church. And sometimes you'll hear people say that church today should be just like it was in Acts chapter 2. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoy air conditioning. Um, I think it's nice to have a restroom on the inside. And have some electricity and running water. So I don't want to be exactly like the Acts 2 church. But there's still a lot that we can learn from the early church. Verse 42. They devoted themselves. The first thing that we see about the early church. They were all devoted. Devoted means to have devotion to something or someone. The definition of devotion is... Profound dedication, strong attachment to a cause or to a person. When we are devoted, we will have adoration, dedication, worship, love, passion, and faithfulness. Every one of us today is devoted to something or to someone. Some people are devoted to their career Some people are devoted to making a lot of money. Some people are devoted to their political party. Some people are devoted to a sports team. Some are devoted to their hobby. 
And it's possible that some good can come from that devotion, but there's nothing more important or that will have more impact than our devotion to Jesus. The thing that makes the devotion of the early church so beautiful and so powerful is that they decided to devote themselves. They were not forced, they were not pressured to follow Jesus. It was their choice. And it was because of their love for God. It was because of the passion they had for God in their heart. And they worshiped God in spirit and in truth. And they also dedicated themselves and they committed themselves to being faithful to God and each other no matter what it cost. Jesus told us to count the cost before we decided to follow him. To count the cost of our devotion in Luke 9. Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus spelled out exactly for us what it meant to be a devoted Christian. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And we can see in our text today that the early church was a healthy church because they devoted themselves to four very important things. And every healthy church today will also devote themselves to these four things. How to have a healthy church. And we're talking about spiritual health here. Number one, they devoted themselves to God's word. In verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. God's word is presented by preaching. Preaching proclaims the good news about Jesus and how we can all choose to follow him. God's word is also presented by teaching. The apostles taught what the good news means and how we can grow in our faith. God's word is also Presented through encouragement. Believers are motivated to lead real life change through Jesus from the inside out when they are encouraged. In other words, following Jesus makes a difference in our heart and in our life. Romans 12.1 Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy Pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Preaching, teaching, encouragement increases our knowledge. The early church was hungry for more spiritual knowledge. But just because someone has all the Bible answers does not mean that they are spiritually mature. It just means they have a lot of knowledge. But if we can first grow in humility then God can transform our mind to help us grow spiritually. Romans 12, 2, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the perfect will of God. How to have a healthy church? They devoted themselves to God's word. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Verse 42 they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship. In other words, they devoted themselves to each other. The word translated fellowship is koinonia. This means that we are partners in Christ. This means that we are part of God's family. This means that we are committed to help each other. Fellowship means so much more than just hanging out together. Fellowship means to have all things in common. In fact, we will see that the early church sold all of their stuff to make sure that everyone had what they needed to live. But this is not some form of communism. Communism is forced on people. This sharing fellowship was completely voluntary and was motivated by love for God and for each other. By selling all their stuff 
was a temporary solution to meet the specific needs of the people at that time. How to have a healthy church? They devoted themselves to God's word. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread. Breaking of bread is simply eating together. Some of y'all are going to do that in a few minutes. It also refers to sharing the Lord's Supper together. We're going to do that together in a few weeks. There's something about eating a meal with someone that helps us get to know people better. It helps us learn how we can better serve each other when we break bread together. Sharing the Lord's Supper together reminds us of God's great gift to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And is an example to us about how we should all be generous givers. How to have a healthy church. They devoted themselves to God's Word. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. They devoted themselves to prayer. Verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. There are many good reasons for us to devote ourselves to prayer. Prayer is like the air that we breathe. Prayer is our power source of our spiritual life. That's why God commands us to pray. Philippians verse 4, Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus was a person of prayer. And if Jesus knew that prayer was essential, how much more should we pray also? Prayer gives us the strength that we need to overcome temptation. Prayer gives us the wisdom that we need to make wise choices. When we pray for each other, it helps us not to be inwardly focused. It helps us to see the needs of others and then trust God to meet those needs. Prayer is not trying to get God to do what I want. It's through prayer that we surrender our will to God's will for us. Prayer increases our faith and our trust in the ways of God. God's ways are so far beyond our ways. It's a beautiful thing to see how God can work in our heart through prayer. Ephesians chapter 3, Not to Him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We need to pray together. That's why we prayed together today. That's why our life groups pray together. And we should also pray on our own. Scripture encourages us to pray without ceasing. We should pray for the sick. We should pray for the lost. We should pray for our church. We should pray daily for each other. The healthy church is made up of people who value the power of prayer. Verse 43. Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Everyone was filled with awe. Awe is an overwhelming feeling of reverence, of admiration, and respect. Awe is when we sense the divine presence of a holy God. Wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles to the point that everyone was filled with awe. They were not in awe of the beautiful building or the great music or the good preaching or the exciting programs. They were in awe of God's supernatural power. The wonders and signs were not meant to just be entertainment. They were not designed just to impress. Wonders and signs were to get the people's attention so they could be directed, so they could be pointed to a spiritual truth. The ability to perform miracles was not given to everyone. 
the ability to perform miracles was given to the apostles at that time to confirm that they were the messengers of God. The age of the apostles is completed. We now have the completed scriptures to guide us. So the apostles' signs and wonders are no longer needed. Today we can confirm who speaks the truth of God by making sure that what they teach lines up with the teaching found in Scripture. God continues to perform miracles all the time, but they are no longer signs and wonders of the apostles. God continues to heal people. God continues to do wonderful things. God continues to answer our prayers according to His will. We serve an amazing, wonderful, supernatural God. And we should all be in all. One of the greatest miracles that God performs every day is when a sinner is changed through Jesus from the inside out. It's the miracle of forgiveness of our sin. It's the miracle of eternal life. It's the miracle of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the miracle of becoming part of the family of God. The most amazing miracle ever seen is God's miracle of grace and God's miracle of mercy as people believe in God and put their trust in Jesus Christ. Verse 44. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. No, again, communism is not taught in the scriptures. Instead, what is taught is radical generosity. The early church decided that they didn't need a lot of stuff, so they shared what they had with each other. Our God is a giving God. He's our example. And we should follow His example and also become a generous giver. Verse 45, They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all As any had need. The point here is not that we should all take a vow of poverty. It's not saying that we should sell everything we have. The believers simply realized the truth. That we do not own anything. We are just the temporary managers of some stuff we call ours. Someday... Everything that we own will be owned by somebody else. And most of it will be considered junk that no one wants. You will never see a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. So why not invest the things that we are managing so that they will have eternal value? The only stuff that matters is the stuff that we give away. One of the signs of true discipleship, one of the signs that God has our heart, is when a radical change happens in our attitude about money and about stuff. The true believer understands that everything we have belongs to God. And if that's true, then how can giving back to Him 10% ever become a problem? I've never met an unhappy, generous giver in all these years. But unhappy, selfish, stingy people are everywhere. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, Remember this, the person who plants a little will have a small harvest. But the person who plants a lot will have a big harvest. Each of you should give. As you have decided in your heart to give. You should not be sad when you give. And you should not give because you feel forced to give. God loves the person who gives happily. And God can give you more blessings than you ever need. Then you will always have plenty of everything. Enough to give to every good work. Verse 46. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple. 
and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts. You know, the early church couldn't wait till Sunday. They met every day. How would you like that? They met in the church. And they also met in each other's homes. And they were blessed with a joyful and sincere heart. So this is the result of a church filled with unity and generosity. This is the result of a healthy church in verse 47. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So what is God saying to us today? To have a healthy church, they devoted themselves to God's word. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to breaking of bread. They devoted themselves to prayer. They devoted themselves to generous giving. You see, the church is God's idea. The church is part of God's eternal plan. May Argyle be a healthy church for God's glory. The Apostle Peter said, Then anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on him today. He will hear your call.